Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff, your tropical plant party. What's your favorite color? Elf. Anyone? No one? That's fine. Who wants to do some Christmas crafts? I kind of do. I'm weird with crafts. Like, I get into them, and I'm like, this sounds like fun, and I start doing it, and I'm like, eh, I'm over it. I have a pot here. I should talk about what we're doing here. So, this time last year, around this time last year, I did an ugly Christmas sweater planter. Basically, I took an old sweater, glued stuff to it, put it on a pot. It was a lot of fun. Just like mindless, pointless, dumbness, no point to any... I've been drinking. So that was the other thing. Uh, when I did that video, I had some cocktails and just sat down and had fun plant craft time. And I thought I'd continue the tradition. But the problem is I, I haven't had a sip of anything in like 9, 10, probably. No, I don't, I don't, I don't even know when. So it turns out it only takes one small drink. And that was, that was enough. So uh, I'm not going to be having a cocktail like I did last year because I had the one. And um, it should be interesting. Anyways, there's a great shot getting things set up here on the tripod. I was thinking this year, instead of doing like the ugly Christmas sweater planter challenge, whatever we were calling it, and then tagging other people, that I would just do like a plant miss challenge and see, you know, use things from around the house and do something with your plants. Maybe decorate a house plant, maybe do a tour of how we've incorporated our decorations and with our plants, something like that. And for this video, I've already tagged and talked a ton to Pam from Pam's Planty Things over here on YouTube. So she will be doing this video also, I think today, I believe. We've talked a bunch. She helped come up with the concept and um, the tag name and she will tag someone else to just basically do whatever the heck they feel like this year. And uh, we'll go from there. Didn't want to come up with anything that would require people to have to leave the house or have to buy anything and spend money. Cause you know, COVID, right? Times are hard right now. So I just thought it would be best to just keep it low key and simple. For me, I am going to go ahead and glue things to a flower pot. Because if I'm being honest, I really just, I just want to use my glue gun. I've only used it like twice since I made that video last year and it was a good time. And I will also be answering some questions as we go through here. I put up a thing on Instagram and as those questions roll in, I will try and answer them while I'm doing this. What I'm going to do here though is, a, I think I already said, I'm gonna glue things to a pot. I have tons and tons of things left over from the video last year where I was making those ugly Christmas sweater planters. Got a lot of stuff from the dollar store, mostly just ornaments. You guys ever seen those ornament wreaths where you take the hot glue gun and you just glue ornaments to a reframe? I did one of those a few years ago and I loved it. This isn't gonna be anywhere near as pretty probably, but that's okay. I'm striving here for just mostly just having a good time. Why are these so hard to get out of these stupid tubes? Oh, there's so much glitter. Well, I think glitter is beautiful. I despise having glitter everywhere. It, they make me itch and I get little like red bumps on my face and they tend to burn. Some of these are kind of broken. That's because of being stepped on. There's always one that just doesn't want to behave. Get out of there. Oh, okay. Well, that's gone forever. Okay, last one. Ah, oh, that one's gone forever too. Oh man, I forgot to turn the heat gun on. Heat gun, glue gun. Gonna have to let that warm up for a while. Doesn't usually take very long. First question from Instagram, it is, what does it say? There is your ugly Christmas sweater planter. Will you be doing a classy Chris? I don't do, no, there's no classy Christmas sweater, but I don't really do classy. I put ice cubes in my wine. That's, I'm not that person. I still have the sweater. It was just a sweater that I put over a pot. It's in the house. I just didn't set the window up the same this year. So I don't have it like out on display, but I still have it. And it made me smile when I unpacked it. We got drips, starting to drip. Think that means ready to go. I have all kinds of ornaments here. Just a total random assortment. And I think I'm going to have to make sure to put them on here in a very, very random pattern. I know myself well enough. If I try and put these on to have some sort of pattern, it's it will drive me mad. I can't do it. I'm going to try and keep this as random as I can. There's I'm going to get glue on the desk. It's okay. This isn't real wood, so it'll come off of there. Let go string. I should probably start this from the bottom and do the corners first, just to make sure that things sit on here properly and then work my way up 
so that I can, you know, set this down the way it needs to be set down. Does that make sense? Not really. This isn't a how-to video. Hot glue just going to pop right off of this because it's plastic. I mean, hot glue tends to stick to most things, but sometimes with plastic, it comes right off. I don't know. It doesn't matter. This will work. It's fine. Okay, next question. How many lights are in or on your house right now? Well, I don't... Do you mean specifically how many lights? I have no idea. Typically... Oh, see, this is why I was supposed to do the corners first. See how that overlaps there? Forgot to do it. I did it on that side. Didn't do it. You were here. You saw it. I get pretty easy on the lights this year. They're just net lights. They're out on some of the shrubs and then some of like the old school Christmas decorations like the, what's it called? The blown plastic things. They have like a Santa and a reindeer and a Frosty out there. Nothing very elaborate. And then in the house, it's mostly just the Christmas tree and then some garland. Do you have a dream palm tree? If so, what is it? I do have a dream palm tree. I have wanted a variegated Chinese fan palm for like probably a good 20 years, something like that. And the kicker to that is that I used to see them for sale. It used to be obtainable, but they were like $100. And at the time I was like, well, that's outrageous. I'm not spending that on a plant. And I'm, I still think that way. Things have changed an awful lot as far as plant availability goes. And now I know if I were to find one for sale, it would be a lot more than $100. So missed opportunities that's okay i'm wondering if i should stick to doing just these two sides first because i don't know if i have enough ornaments to cover the entire thing and at least if i have these two sides done then i can put this in a corner in my garden window that might i think that's what i'll do just to be safe oh never mind i lied i can't do that it would bother me too much not having ornaments all the way around on all the sides i also very much like the chrysosakis redna the red ceiling wax palm and the erika vesteriara blah, 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 blah. That's the orange collar palm. They're gorgeous palm trees. They aren't palms I would want to grow because they require a lot of heat and humidity. And uh, like, they're just, they're tricky palms. So I wouldn't want one of my own, but I think they're really cool. If I lived in a climate where I could grow those more easily, then I would definitely have one of those. Oh, Nikki from Plants, Pots, and What's Nots. She said, ooh, crafts, with a question mark. What's your favorite type of craft to make? Now I want to craft. You want to craft? Nikki, you're tagged. Do something crafty. Plantmas 2020. Whatever you feel like, put like a bow tie on a cactus or something. I don't know. But you're tagged. You're it. And my favorite type of craft to make? Oh, that's a tough one. I really enjoyed Terrarium Tuesday last year. I'm not positive if that counts as a craft, the terrariums, the ones I did in those apothecary jars. I'm not sure if that counts. Okay, this could be a problem. See that? See that gap there? I don't think I'll be able to put another one in there. That was weird. My voice just decided it didn't want to work anymore. If that counts as a craft, I had a lot of fun with that. I have also always enjoyed making mosaics. Those are a lot of fun. The acrylic pours, those are a blast. Anything that involves hot glue, pretty good times there. Favorite podcast? Ooh, that question makes me sad. <laughs> The only podcast that I used to listen to on a regular basis was the Jenna Marbles, Julian Solomita podcast, and they're not, you know, they're not doing their podcast anymore. Yeah, their podcast I enjoyed. I haven't really gotten into any others, not because I, I dislike them, just because I haven't, I don't know, I haven't really gotten into podcasts in general. What happened to the Triangle Palm and the Likuwala? I still have the Triangle Palm. It's here. It's hanging out in the garage. I don't have the Likuwala anymore, unfortunately. Those aren't really palms for people who uh, don't know much about plants. They're not a beginner level palm tree. And, you know, I wasn't the one taking care of my plants over the summer. So uh, the Likuwala did not fare very well. Do you have any DIY planters, stands? If so, what's your favorite? I'm looking for ideas. Well, a lot of my DIY stands I did more for utility than anything, so they're not the most attractive things, like the shelves that are over here. And those are just folding tables stacked on top of each other. I like how they worked out an awful lot because when it, it's summertime, those just fold up flat and I can put them away. So that aspect of it's great, but they don't look very good. Just accidentally punched my camera. And then DIY, oh, there's a green one in here. How many green ones are in here? There's all kinds of different colors down there. Uh-oh. I gotta start working these green ones in here. That's going to look 
really, really bizarre at some point. The video is going to be so in and out of focus because it can't decide between the gun or this or my hand. Sorry about that. I'd say one of my favorite DIYs is probably the fountain that I put in a video just a few days ago on the channel. That's just, it always makes me so happy, brings me so much peace. It was so simple and it looks nice and has the nice sounds and everything. I'll make a planter out of anything. I really liked a planter I did a few years ago with my variegated aloe plant and it was just a big blue bucket and I put like some sand and some like random beach accessories in there. I thought that was fun. What do slash did you do for a living before YouTube? Is YouTube your main money nowadays? Good, there's gold ones now too. That's not going to fit in with any of these other ones. My background is in psychology. When I started school, I wanted to either go into marine biology or horticulture. The school I went to wasn't the best for either of those programs, and I suck at math. Well, I did at the time. Turns out that I just wasn't being taught math properly when I ended up taking a math class where I had to do it online and teach myself. I did wonderfully, so apparently it was just really bad teachers. Not necessarily bad teachers, but the way it was being taught in school just didn't work with my brain. So I ended up going with psychology because I love psychology. My focus was kind of all over the place in psych. A lot of studies with human sexuality, 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 and endocrinology, and then a lot, a lot of time with what would probably fall under social psychology, but mostly studies with minority mental health and cultural psychology. I had wanted to go on for my PhD because I really enjoyed teaching. The problem though uh, was just that professors, they get treated like garbage. And uh, I was seeing the hours that my mentors were working and um, for what they were getting paid, I just, it did, didn't seem like the route that was probably best for me. I have been thinking about maybe going back, but you know, the academic atmosphere right now is kind of non-existent. So something I'm thinking about for the future, maybe. And I have done work in landscaping, mostly design and consultation, those sorts of things. I've had a lot of jobs over the years, but YouTube is my main source of income these days. I don't really plan on keeping it that way, but with the way things are going with COVID, uh, it's, it's been nice, actually. COVID hasn't been nice. Having YouTube to fall back on has been nice, but I wouldn't consider it secure enough to call that a permanent thing. What tropical theme plants can be used to make a tropical theme planter? That's a good question. There's the classic, the Euphorbia poinsettia. Poinsettia, however you want to say it. That's a tropical plant. But if you mean like regular tropical plants, then well, I don't know. I've seen a lot of really cute things. Actually, the person, Sunny the Heartless, I think that you posted something not too long ago on Instagram where someone had put little ornaments on the tips of their agave. I thought that was pretty clever. Maybe throw a Santa hat on a cactus. As far as colors are concerned, there's some nice red philodendrons. Caladiums are great. There's a lot of white, red, and green ones. Those would be good options for the holidays. That may have been muffled. I was scratching glitter off. You see all the glitter? Do you see this? That's too much. I don't like it. Yeah, I suppose just anything with red, white, and green on it. There are lots of bromeliads that have some very nice red, white, and green variegation on them. Those are really pretty. You could always swap out whatever you're top dressing the gravel with if you have top dressing on your plants with like some red, white, green, any kind of combination on your plants. That could be kind of cute. Or use tiny little ornaments, some sort of vase filler. That's more about the craft than the plants. These, like, I'm pulling out a lot of these sparkly ornaments, so I need to mix it up a little bit more. This is a craft you've wanted to get into but haven't. Pottery. When I was in high school, I took a class. It was like one of the required just like random elective classes. I don't remember what it was called, but it was just random art for the most part. And we got to do a, a pot on the pottery wheel. That was some of the most fun I've ever had. I'd, is pottery a craft though? When I think of crafts, I think of like yarn and glue. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pottery might be more of a hobby than a craft. That, that's okay, that's my answer. I'm sticking to it, pottery. What do you do when you're not doing planty things or playing with your pets? That's a good question. Nothing very exciting, I can tell you that. I mean, or most of us aren't, right? It's the COVID thing. When I do have downtime these days, I probably spend a good chunk of it watching YouTube videos, streaming things, I like to dig around the research databases, to see if there's anything fun or new out about plants. Reb, Plantastica, she said, why do you deny me adequate Colby footage in your videos? What have I done to you? Okay, well, here's the deal with 
Colby. If you don't know, Colby is my tortoise, a Sulcata tortoise or an African Spurthide tortoise. I have a few pets that I really actually prefer to not show that often because I don't want to influence or tempt anybody to then get those animals. Parrots and Colby are a really good example of that. I have them and I love them to death. I did a whole video about my parrots a while ago. I got those when I was a very, very young child. If Colby were like a Herman's tortoise or something that's a little bit more easy to keep in captivity for more people, then I would show Colby more often than I do. I have a big yard. I've worked with animals my entire life and uh, I know uh, what Colby needs to have a long, happy, healthy life. But the Sulcata tortoises, unfortunately, are sold very cheap, like very, very cheap. People get them when they're these teeny tiny, cute little bitty tortoises. And then the next thing you know, they weigh, you know, 100, 150 pounds and they're gigantic. And they're sent off to zoos and things like that because people get them and they can't care for them for their entire lives. And I don't want to influence anybody to do that. And I also don't want to have to make a disclaimer every time I show my tortoise about, you know, the proper care and how big they get and all those things. So I show Colby in passing, but I don't like to like focus on Colby too terribly much. Same thing with the parrots and the iguana especially. They're very rarely taking care of how they need to be. The iguana's a rescue. One of my parrots is a rescue also. The other one I got from a pet store. It was, I was very little. And then when I wanted to get my parrot a companion, got that one from a rescue. And I, I now have more of a stance where I just, I don't really like the idea of keeping birds in captivity. I'm not saying that to upset anybody, I just, I feel bad for them. They have the wings, they want to fly, and they can't. I'm not saying that people's parrots that they have aren't living happy lives. I just, I don't know, I have a thing in my stomach where I feel bad about it. <laughs> Same thing with the iguanas, and even the, I mean, animals in general, really, if I'm being honest here. Okay, another question here from Reb from Plantastica. She said, if we did a plant tube remake of Seinfeld, which character would you be? also friends that is a very good question i don't know i mean i feel like with those shows the characters are all so ridiculous and it's sort of the combination of them that sort of marks what a person is but when you narrow each one down like if anybody were really like those people then it would be a disaster i'd have to say probably jerry or elaine friends i don't know maybe phoebe the thing with friends when that was on I really didn't identify, for the most part, with any of the male characters. The, the 90s, there was a lot of um, machismo and just a lot of like, I'm a man, I'm a dude, and just things that, I don't know, it just didn't really jive with me and I didn't get it. Probably Phoebe, but like also like not really. This is all I have left of the big ornaments that's not going to be enough to cover the other sides here. I'm going to go ahead and stop with the big ornaments on the other sides. I got these two sides done. And I think I have some smaller ornaments that I can tuck in to fill in some of these gaps. Found a bag with tiny little balls in it. Those went everywhere. Should have, really should have seen that coming. This is where things get a little bit more challenging. I'm going to have to back the camera up because I really need to be able to see what I'm doing here. I don't have a wireless mic. It broke like two years ago. I never got a new one. I have a new one picked out. Hopefully I'll be getting it soon. So I have to, like, if you could see me, I'm, you, maybe you can in the ornaments. I'm like right behind the camera with a mic that goes on top of the camera. And it's just, it's not always the best for filming. So I really need to get on top of ordering the a new wireless microphone. Next question, what got you into content creation? That, I, I don't really <laughs> remember. I think that it started because I was talking to some people who had some questions about their plants and some things that were going on. So I went ahead and just like made a video and put on YouTube for them to see it. And I enjoyed the editing process. I wasn't really taking it too seriously. I've always enjoyed editing with music or videos. I think it's fun. I don't get to do a ton of creative editing with a lot of the videos that I do, which is something I'll probably be changing in the future. Maybe on my other channel, I'll do some things over there. Did y'all know I have another channel? I started it back in like, I don't know, January or February last year. It's Jeff Unfiltered. That's, you know, just tends to be what people call their secondary channels. And uh, the intention behind that channel was supposed to just be uh, like kind of a rant channel, but not like in a mean way, just in jest, like for funnies for jits and shiggles and then everything started happening with covid and i was like you know 
even though I had decided that this was just going to be like for funsies and none of it's meant to be taken seriously, there's enough negativity out there and I don't I didn't want to do anything with it. There's really nothing on that channel right now. Just a few videos that like you're required to have some videos to get the channel going, so I just uploaded some random things from my phone. Really neither here nor there, that isn't, that's not even what the question was about. How did I get into plants? That should be enough glue, holy crap. The first plants I remember being intrigued by, I was really, really little. My uh, mom had grape hyacinths planted in the garden and I used to grow off my wagon and pick them and try and sell them back to her as grapes. This is before my family had moved, so I was probably, between three and five, something like that. But I was really intrigued by those and the like her snapdragons. There was just something about them that was fun to me. And then also, oh, is that glue still wet? Can I still get that on there? Good. And then my aunt who lives in Seattle, she was really big into uh, orchids and bonsai. And when I was very, very little, we would go out and visit. She would show me her plants and teach me how to do the bonsais and uh, it was just it was a lot of fun and I was always like really into the orchids in St. Louis the nurseries really didn't have much going on at the time but up in Seattle I mean it was just and still is I'm sure just a haven for gardeners the nurseries were so full and lush and there's just something so fun and magical about being up there nice plants to put into handmade pots i would say anything that doesn't require too much watering because handmade pots oh that's hot that's hot that's on my finger ouch <laughs> because that way you can help preserve the life of your handmade pot by not having as much water in it or just any plant you can keep in a different container and set it inside there then you could do whatever you want with that and water it when it's not in the container so cactus succulents those sorts of things uh sansevarias not dracaenas but you know what I mean. What happened here? Look what I did. Made a big mess. Maybe even some sort of Hoya. Those can always be fun. I swear, I feel like probably 90% of this video wasn't in focus and the audio is probably terrible. I'm sorry. This is one thing I like about the plant tag type videos when it's just sort of a craft and just sit back, have a good time, not have to take things too seriously or focus on things being extremely informative when it comes to the plants. It's not, there's nothing educational about this. It's not a how-to video. A little sparkly glitter ball just fell in there I'm gonna have to get that out later but i'm also not totally used to this kind of format so i forget to look back at my viewfinder and check in on things my apologies again pretty sure i already apologized once before for this okay and then nicole from my clean leaves asked what are your holiday plans this year well i don't really know Right, this year's kind of a crapshoot for everybody, isn't it? Do you know I will have family coming in town. They're going to be quarantining, self-quarantining for a little while and getting tested and everything so we can spend the holidays together. Because of COVID, having family in the military and then my other sibling being a resident, the schedules are kind of weird and wonky. So we will probably be doing Christmas, maybe not on Christmas, but like within a day or so of it. Just fine, the whole point's just to be together and spend time with family. I'm just glad and grateful that we all get to be together and everybody's healthy and doing well. Okay, I'm going to finish gluing in all these little ornaments and come right back. <laughs> okay, uh, it's the next day the hot glue gun died, so I said, forget it, you know, fa la 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 la, fuck it. I come out here and I'm like, oh, that's what I did? I mean, I don't hate it. Little sloppy, lots of glue strings on everything, but it's not too bad. Nice and sparkly. Who doesn't love sparkles? And I, of course, had to put a plant in there, and nothing says Christmas like bubblegum bright pink. I don't care. It makes me happy. It's so colorful and pretty. Actually, I don't hate this. I would probably look better with a red poinsettia or a white one, but this is fine too. It's pretty. That's all that matters. Okay, and real quick, I forgot to take the q a thing off my instagram story so there are some more questions i'm gonna go ahead and try and knock out of here real quick so the first one is tell us more about your parrots how old names what type what's your favorite thing about them i love my parrots so 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 much i did a video on them like i mentioned before i'll link that down below uh cosmo is a blue crown conure he is 22 years old that's the one that was from a pet store and then the amazon is a blue fronted amazon his name's BJ. I did not name him. He was a rescue. Came with the name. And then the person I adopted uh, 
BJ from said that she was probably like six to eight years old. So she's probably like 28 to 30 years old, something like that. I actually don't even know if BJ's a girl. I'm really, I'm not sure. If there are things that matter, they're more characteristic of a female parrot, but I don't know for sure. I never did the DNA test. Oh, and how did you decide to get a munchkin cat? Pumpkin is so cute. Pumpkin is so cute. I love her so much. I actually didn't decide to get one. I was just adopting a Himalayan and she didn't grow. What was the most difficult part of learning to move plants in and out for the seasons? What struggles? Oh, I could go about that one, on about that one for a long time. I think, I don't know. I started moving my plants when I was a teenager i used to take them to the basement at that point i had shop lights up i would say the one of the bigger challenges was i mean aside from just physically <laughs> carrying all the plants downstairs was being able to light them properly down in that dark basement especially back then when you couldn't really affordably just get grow lights unless using something like metal halides but they're those are not cheap they never really have been and they use a ton of electricity and then learning to manage humidity and temperature it was several years ago when i started i used originally there was a water trough like the kind for livestock in here it held like 100 150 gallons and uh, i used that to keep my fish in because i love my fish and uh, to be able to use that water for the plants that way it could be oxygen rich dechlorinated and uh, be nutrient dense from the fish waste but that wasn't enough that wasn't ever enough to actually water all of the plants that's when i upgraded to this pool pond that's it's back you've seen it it's back there you know what i'm talking about every year i do things just a little bit differently try and improve on different things this year my big focus is lighting switching over a lot of my leds and then uh, also uh, trying some different things with how i'm gonna get the plastic hung up that's uh, hopefully we will see this plant you'd love to have but doesn't seem to love you back oh man that that would be the australian tree fern but to be fair is for that plant i think that a big problem i had with that fern was that it i should have repotted it last year the soil that it was in just drained way too fast didn't hold on to moisture long enough so it was just a constant struggle keeping that plant hydrated but i've since repotted it and we'll see how it does see if it bounces back from the cold and does better hopefully i won't have to water it quite as often and then the hardest part of 2020 and the quarantine for you i'd have to say the cancer that was pretty sucky can't say for certain that the cancer developed because of covid but when i had my biopsy done in march and was ready to have my surgery there was no cancer and then they shut things down and i was stuck with these metal stitches in my body for a few months until things opened back up and was able to get back into a doctor there had been a lot of trauma to the area because it swelled up from being sliced open and having the stitches in there so it seemed probable that the cancer developed because of that delay between when they did the biopsy left the stitches in there and then when i was able to get in to have that tumor removed so yeah that sucked uh, just in general just not a great time for surgeries i had never really had surgery before i mean i had when i was a tiny kid but i don't remember it so i was terrified of surgery and then to end up having to have three of them and then that two-week gap that when they did a rescission in the area on my back and just left me with a humongous hole in my body for almost two weeks because i had to wait for more biopsy results before they could do skin graft that wasn't fun i've never shown the picture people have asked to see and it's just it is so graphic that i don't think i could and i would probably i'd probably have to make it black and white put music up so people can look away if they don't want to see it and turn the music off when it's over that was just bad that wasn't great but there were things that i grew from with the situation for sure anxiety is lower in some ways i'm more relaxed when it comes to a lot of things it's also higher in <laughs> a few other ways i think that's common for everybody right now with what's going on what do i think about plant popularity rising and prices skyrocketing yeah there's a lot i could say about that one too i think that the rising plant popularity is fantastic this is a hobby that i think is really really healthy for a lot of people 
there's a lot of research to back up what gardening and what plants can do for people's mental health. So in that regard, I think it's fantastic and I love the rising popularity. There's a flip side to that. You know, there's always an ugly side. The way things are on social media is kind of, in my opinion, a little bit ridiculous when it comes to the house plants. There's a lot of competitiveness, a lot of behind the scenes drama. I steer clear of all of that. This is a hobby that I think everybody should be able to enjoy. I don't feel like it's quite as much yay plants just happy plant time as it used to be just a lot more bs and drama so in some ways i think it's fantastic there are going to be uh, different plants available because the nurseries can't really keep up like they used to so the selection should be changing which is exciting nurseries are ordering in things that they didn't used to order in which i love the price is skyrocketing I and mean, it just sucks there's really no other way to say it that's not fun everything costing a lot more and then like having these really fun special plants that only people who can afford to spend a few hundred dollars on a stick can get i think that sucks but then there's you know the business side of that and there's supply and demand and I mean, i've seen the wholesale lists even the wholesalers and the growers they're charging a lot of money for these plants right now because even some of them are having a lot of trouble getting them. So and that's something where it's just, it's going to take time for that to come down. On some of the plants, the prices are probably never going to come down very much. But for the most part, on a lot of them, if the popularity stays the same, if they start tissue culturing them, which I think they already have with an awful lot of them, that should help with the prices a lot. But it'll be, you know, two or three years until that really takes effect. And who knows what's really going to happen once these vaccines are out and once things are better with COVID. It's hard for me to believe that gardening is going to be quite as popular in 2021 as it was in 2020, because hopefully there won't be a shutdown that has people staying at home quite as much and doing the yard work and the gardening. I don't say hopefully because of people taking all the plants, I mean so that people can go to work and get back to living their normal lives. There are so many ins and outs and intricacies, so many details and perspectives to talk about on that topic that I'm probably just gonna leave it at that. There's some good and there's some bad. That's just kind of the way things grow, right? Okay, that's gonna do it. Oh, you can kind of see my reflection there in the orange. You see me? Hi, how you doing? I don't wanna end on a sour note. We talked about the rare plant thing on here plenty of times. I hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for the questions. Thanks for hanging out while I just randomly glue things to a plastic pot. Not my finest work, but it's sparkly, so I'm into it. That's all it takes, just give me sparkles. It's really a double-edged sword there because I really despise glitter. It is everywhere, it's on everything, but it is so freaking pretty when it stays where it's supposed to be. Oh, and I didn't rotate the pot to show you what I did on the other sides because as I suspected, I didn't have enough because I was just working with what was hanging out here around the house and what I had laying around. So just the one side there, and that's fine. I'm only gonna be able to see this from one side in the house anyways. I'm saving what's left here because I need them to patch up some ornaments that fell off of an old ornament wreath that I made. I need to hold on to what's left here. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. What are some fun things y'all been doing with your house plants? You got any fun crafts going on or do you have favorite like just winter holiday crafts? What do you like to do? Comment down below, love talking to everybody. Oh, and don't worry, I'll get in there and clean up all these little stringy bits that are in here like there are some patches where the glue is pretty like gummed up and kind of scuddy need to scrape that off okay time to go losing my voice as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye